So today we're starting off with a very simple little composition. Um, I wanted to do something simple. I'm starting with a little sketch, just trying to place everything on a square canvas because that's what I've got. So it always helps to do a little thumbnail. You can place things. I'm trying to decide whether to put another quarter in the corner there. But because I've got a shadow coming around that plate, I'm thinking the shadow will bring enough interest into that area anyway. But just looking, um, trying to place everything, how it's all going to fit onto that square canvas. And this drawing part is so important. And often I don't stick to it, but it just is a stepping uh, place for my brain to sort of start from and to help me to figure it out. So now just putting in the basic shapes. And those shapes are beautiful shapes because... Really, they're very easy. You've got sort of one fairly straight line and then a semicircle. And, you know, drawing a plate is a, bit, is a bit tricky for people who haven't done it before. But I'll show you in a moment a, a technique to use to get the, the eclipse right. And I've shown it to you in other videos before too, but I'll show it again. And now just using a burnt umber um, as your background just to get some dark in there. That... Uh, color will probably be changed at a later stage but I'm just getting that dark background in so I can focus on the rest of the drawing pulling the edge of that plate off the canvas um, I did that in my little drawing so now I'm doing it on the big canvas this canvas is just see there's the triangle sorry there's the um, rectangle and all I'm doing is halving it and quartering it and then I can actually make the shape fit into that rectangle to, to get that eclipse right. So this video is obviously sped, sped up a lot in the early stages and in the drawing. So we can just get those basic shapes down and start fiddling with them. And adjusting them and checking to see um, the distance between the edge of the plate and the shape. And that's all you're doing is you're looking to see where the shape sits, the angle of the shape, the negative spaces between those shapes, if they're right, if the shape intersects with the plate at the right place, and just judging, 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 looking at, um, looking at those angles and assessing. And it's easy to start with one shape that works, get that shape the right proportion in the bigger shape, and then work from that. So putting your basic darks down, um, just a grey down blue and a purple to grey down a blue you're just going to mix a little bit of orange into your blue or you can use a Payne's grey or you can use a, um, a raw umber into your blues so you can just grey it down and get a darker tone and that's really what you're interested in doing now is putting your basic underpainting down so that you can work from there and making sure that all the shapes are in the right place because this is the time now where you can adjust it at this stage using gum terps because it evaporates quite quickly. So going back over that dark with a little bit of blue, trying to just neutralize it a bit, bringing in beautiful, strong ultramarine blue with a bit of purple and maybe a bit of Payne's gray to get those darks. Um, and now drawing back into those shapes from the background in. This is quite a lovely um, exercise because you can go quite bright and pure with your colors. You can tone them down. But this is uh, having those yellows painted straight into the oranges is a really nice idea because then you can leave that yellow in the background.
So these beautiful strong blues, purples, um, even turquoises you can put in the plate. As long as tonally everything reads well, you can really sort of play up colour notes. Okay, so just filling in, adding more paint, getting some a little bit of green into that uh, shadow area because that's what I can see. Now putting down some of those oranges for the inside of that orange, but I'm leaving some of that yellow through and that's the important thing. Because if you leave some of that yellow through, that can be a nice fresh light. Those lovely reflections in the plate can bring bright color could use yellow and white there's a bit of a yellow reflection from the lemon onto the plate and see it's flanked by a bit of purple which is actually lovely because those are complementary colors playing against each other so you can play those colors up or play them down That orange as that background is a bit bright but you can see now I've actually toned it down with a bit of blue for that edge color because that's in shadow so um, you know you want to sort of keep that tone a bit similar to the plate and you're just adding a little bit of blue into that orange getting that real neutral color The light's just hitting the edge of that orange there, so we need to have that there so it looks like it's rounded and the orange is moving back into the plate. Um, and we just use all these visual cues to help us get to where we need to get to in the end. So in putting this color down, this orange, I'm breaking it up. I don't want to have one solid line. And now I've slowed the video down to real time so you can see how each brush stroke is carefully placed um, and how I get the effect of the light on this orange. Just load the brush and you see I'm using the side of that square brush and just stroking the color down. And by the end of this, um, it's quite amazing how that actually reads as... Um, the inside of an orange. So a lot of this is just technique to understand how to create that impression. Loading my brush with light and placing some lights now where the light will be catching the top of that orange segment and just um, keep loading my brush to get those beautiful light effects. I want to sort of cut that other orange um, with the edge of this orange so I want to make sure I get that impression in place. So bringing just a um, little bit of that darkened orange with a bit of blue into the edge of that orange, um, trying to define that edge on that uh, middle orange a little bit more and then I'll come and soften it. 
still working that to see if I can get it to look more realistic and to get the shape right. So pulling in the palette knife here to try and get some stronger colour into the edge of that orange because that is where the light is hitting. Um, bringing in some more blues and creating a little bit stronger colour into the back of that plate as well. Trying to sort those highlights out and get them light enough. Having a bit of a frustrating time with that really simple orange there because in order to get that light I'm going to dark, then I'm going to red, but this is how you do it and then you just come back and compare and have another look at it. Some background on the actual canvas itself. So I had a piece of canvas that I've stuck to a, a bit of, I don't know, Maggie had it lying Perspex. around, Perspex, and um, I had taped up to the edges. and. Because I taped up to the edges, we couldn't see that I hadn't cut that bit off. So what I've done is taken that tape off. I might actually put some more tape on. Um, and then just so that I just wanted a clean edge to see where we were from a design point of view. So I'm going to retape it, which is where I sort of had it before. Um, and then I've got a lovely edge to work with. So this is just masking tape. I've decided from now on I'm going to paint most of my um, paintings on canvas only because you're not getting any from India but also I can just keep them without you know, and then decide which ones to frame and which ones not. And then I, I can just keep them. I haven't got much space at the moment. Um, so it's quite a nice way to do things. And then when you want an exhibition, you can maybe frame them all up the same way. Looking at this through the, the lens of the camera, I see it's too dark. So I'm actually going to scrape off. And this is something palette knife's really lovely for because once you scrape off, you can get yourself some interesting effects just by scraping. And you see, and that is working a little bit better. And then I might come in with some lighter yellow too. So I really do like that yellow on the corner there. I might sort of come in with some of this now, just as a little bit of light coming through there. picking up a bit of green there but it doesn't matter and then I can come back in scrape back and I've got this little bit that's where I picked it up from there so I've got this little bit of a shadow still happening here and I might bring a little bit of orange into there because it's not as dark and then I might be able to just soften this now I need a dry brush I'll soften this and I can just keep working this until I can get what I'm looking for. Okay. So I'll pull some more orange towards the edge here. Some more just there. No, it's not quite as daunting. And if I if I keep my brush loaded with paint, you can still get that effect of having um, the skin buckled a bit. So just fiddling and fiddling and fiddling until I get the effect I'm looking for. Okay, I'm happy to leave that like that for now. This here is very, very light, so I'm looking for that lightest bit. I've got a, a brush with a square edge, and I can use that square edge just to dump paint. Just to 
dump paint where I need to dump it. And just to give you a little bit of um, light hitting that edge there. I can do the same thing actually with this edge of a brush just to get this lovely light I'm looking for here. Now if my palette is getting dirty, I need to be very aware of that because this would be time to clean it up. Wow. See how that works. That changes it completely. Yeah, and then it starts to read, like this wonky shape starts to read a little bit better. Okay, so what is that little bit there? Just seen it now. So I can lighten up this orange a little bit. You can see from the photo that my oranges are quite dark. And this is just, I can go as dark as I want, or I can start lightening up and even bringing a little bit more light into those oranges. Um, this is this is personal we can make it as creative as we want this is not supposed to be a realistic painting it's actually supposed to be just an exercise in in creating an impression of something okay so that back orange quarter to put it to set it back and to set that front quarter in front, I'm just adding a little bit of blue into that uh, orange rind as that creates it sort of pushing back a little bit. And in real life, you can see it's slightly, slightly blue green um, into that section. So that just makes me enable me to bring that front orange forward. Now I see it. But now I, I see it, it before you painted it. No, but oh you, you've got to be careful not to get too complicated and this is where this is happening. But you see how that blue reacts with that orange there? I'm just going to put a little bit there and there's a little bit there too. Um, and this into this white is actually a little bit blue. bluer. Look at that. I've seen that now. If I'll put it there, it'll react with that orange too. Jeez. Okay. That's pretty. Very. Very pretty. I just want to get rid of this little bit of blue here. Um, so I'm trying to keep my brush nice and clean. Let's just put this here. A little bit of light. Okay. So I almost don't want to play with that anymore. It's beautiful. All I want to do is this side here. No. So you wouldn't have put white there. Um, I could. Although it's white there. I could. Because it's in the background. No, I could easily. Are you talking about just here? In the back, yeah. Or there? In the back. Up there? No, no, on the yeah. orange. What I would do, if I was going to do that, I might take this little bit of blue. In fact, it's a bit darker than that. And I might sort of edge it there because there is a little bit of that blue. Oh, and then it will be. And then maybe that's going to give us the dark that we mm. want behind mm. it. But again, mm. the moment you start mm. doing stuff like that, mm. it's getting too complicated. Mm. Just going to do that. And then make that light. See, I, I prefer it not yes. to have that. Do you prefer it there or, yes. or or not there? That's so pretty. So now I'm just going to be forced to make this a little bit darker. But it's pretty. It's a better than the light that yeah. I had there. Okay, so let's leave that like that. That's so pretty. Um, let's put a little bit more of the, the blue just a little bit across here. That's gone. Sometimes a bit of a wobble is a good thing, not a bad thing. Do you know what I mean? A bit of a wobble. Too much, actually, but it doesn't matter. No, it's pretty. 
Let's just go in here. Okay, so let's leave that now and let's just bring that light that we had and I think it was more like a turquoisey colour, wasn't it? It was sort of this... Um, sort of mm, that colour there. light, yeah. Yeah, that sort mm. of colour there. Oh, I like that colour. Mm. Oh my God, I love that colour. Am I in the way of the painting? No. Soften that edge, you don't want it too hard. Let's bring a little bit of yellow into there. Since we can go wrong. Huh? I like that little bit in the back. Oh. The one that I just got rid of? Yeah. <laughs> Just lose that bit here. It was the same, maybe just a little pinker. Does it does it join up? It goes a bit higher. I love paint. Paint is just so incredible. Okay, so you've got that light. Gonna even un I'm going to mix on the actual paint painting, see what happens. I love those brush strokes. And then I'm gonna add the blue. So here we're getting to the end of the painting, and this is very creative. You can go, I I, I mean I feel like I've gone a bit too yellow in that corner. Um, but see, I'm just creating brush strokes, creating marks now and just playing with that background colour. Um, I didn't really love the brown, so I've added a, a little bit of uh, grey to that very background colour. And yes, just fiddling now to make this painting into, you know, a worthwhile little exercise. And really that's all it's been. It's not a work of art, it's just having fun with paint, having fun with colour and really pushing some of that to its limits. Here's where you can also lose a few edges, um, add some very strong colours if you want, um, tone stuff down, re-look at it, look at it through a mirror, look at it through a screen to see what, what needs doing and what you're not happy with. Um, yeah, just evaluate adding a little bit more light here and there, adding light into the plate and just um, just finishing it off. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you've got to see that painting from life is just amazing and it's the best teacher of all. So thanks for watching guys, you can see how you can play with colour and just keep adding and changing and changing colour temperature but set yourself something up and something simple and just enjoy yourselves. Let me know how it goes.